Hello from Heathcote Electronics. Here we have two solenoid point motors. There is a Pico one and a seat one. They both work on the same principle. They have two electromagnets, one there and one there. When an electrical current flows through this electromagnet, it pulls the rod between them across. This, this pin goes up into the point, Tibor, and that moves it across. When the current flows through the other electromagnet, it will pull the ball that way. This Pico one works exactly the same, but you can't see the coils because of these pieces of metal. With the Pico point motor, it's already fitted to the point, so you can see the pin that goes through into the tie bar. You should be able to just see the top of it there. If I draw a picture of the point motor, it's like this. It's an iron rod. Iron has the property of amplifying the magnetic field. If it was brass, it wouldn't do anything at all. On the iron rod, well, around it, the wire is wrapped numerous times. The more times the stronger the magnetic field and the stronger the force. This electromagnet will make the rod move that way. In the rod, there's a pin that goes up into the tie bar of the point motor make the point change from side to side. On the other end of the rod, surrounding it, there's another coil of wire like this. That will, when the current flows through that, that will make the rod go the other way and change the point back again. Because the manufacturers of the point motor are trying to get a big magnetic field to pull the point right across, what they do is put as many turns on as they possibly can, which means they have to use quite fine wire. However, quite a large current flows. So if this current was to flow continuously, it would get very hot and maybe get damaged, burn out. So when the point motor is operated, it has to just have a half second pulse of electricity through it, and that's plenty to move it across. To hold it in place, Pico put a little spring in the point so when you press it across the spring holds it in place so a pulse of electricity down two wires pulls it across and the spring holds it in place uh, we need some power to power the point motor you can either use ac or dc but you need a voltage of more than 12 volts it barely moves at all 12 volts here we've got a 24 volt DC power supply rated at 1 amp. This is the type of power supply that imitates a plug and you just plug it into the socket. On the end is a connector which you don't want. If we cut the connector off we've got two wires going together so we can split those apart, pull them apart a little bit to unwind some of this. And we can bear the two ends. It takes a little bit of practice to do it with cutters, so if you don't want the practice you can get wire strippers. As it's a DC power supply, one of these wires will be positive and one will be negative. Usually, but I wouldn't guarantee they always do it, they mark the positive wire with little white dashes or a white stripe. So now we can have a go at energising the two electromagnets. So I'm going to use this connector just to extend the wires. the little link to connect them together and then there's one black wire it's conventional to have black for the common on point motors red for one end of one coil and green for the other end of the other coil so we've got a common a red and a green 
So if we also get a power supply here, it doesn't matter which way around you connect the positive and negative for this. And if it's AC, it doesn't matter either. So we've got the, the wire coming out of here, split into two, or at least split apart. So the common wire connects on there. So now we can connect the common from the point motor to one of these terminals. So now we've got the common connected. So when we touch the red or the green wire, we're going to have the current flow through the wire around the electromagnet back along the common. So if we touch on the green wire, that's trying to move it to where it already is. Touch the red wire, changes over. Touch the green wire, it should go back again. Although this works, touching the wires, it's not very practical. What you really need is some method of using a switch or something similar to that. So you can have a series of switches on a control panel. Here is the switch, it's got three prongs on the bottom, so this prong joins to that one when the lever's in this way, this joins to that when the lever's held over the other way, then the lever always returns by the spring to the centre so nothing's connected together at all. So all the wiring you need to do is to join this onto the middle, join the red onto one side and the green onto the other side. It might make the point when you move the lever one way the point might move the opposite way to what you want. Well, you could undo the red and the green and swap them over if that's a problem but you could also just turn the switch round. When you solder the switch you tend to run out of hands if you tried to hold the switch the solder and the soldering iron. So you need something to just hold it steady while you do the soldering. Unless you've already fastened it into your control panel and that'll hold it in place. So the only thing I could find to hold it is this vice. I wrapped a bit of cord around it so I don't put any marks on the switch. So now what we need is a piece of wire from the terminal that we were touching the red and green to, to the centre. We need the red on one side and the green on other. So we get the brown wire. I should digress into what sort of wire you need for the point motors. This wire has seven strands, 0.2 millimeter diameter wire. So you see it described as seven times 0.2. I've got it on my website as 1.4 amp wire. Providing you're only working one point motor at a time, and they're not a long distance away, let's say, for example, three metres or more, then this is fine. But if they're a longer distance than that, you need some heavier wire. What you need to do is just put some solder on these pins out of here. This is called pinning. It just makes it very much easier. You need to do the same with the brown wire, pin that. You don't need the bare bit to be this long, so we'll put a bit off there. 
Now if you hold the soldering iron onto the bare piece of wire, all the solder you've already put on will melt. Just hold it in place. If you move it now you make a bad joint. Just hold it in place. If we give a pull on it, that's fine. Now for the moment of truth. Well, throw the switch. There we are. I'll just mention something else about the switches. They come with some washers and nuts. And as you can see, they're threaded all the way down. What you need to do when you're mounting the switch is to just drill a hole you put on one nut to space it off the bottom there's a serrated nut to hold it in place there's this washer and you can see it's got a little tiny bit there that slides in a groove along here and what you do in the hole you make a little notch so this part here, and this is to stop the switch rotating round. So when you put it on, you find the, there we are, if you can see the little groove in there, it goes on there, and secure it in place with the other nut. That shows how to work one point motor with one switch, but most likely you've got a lot more than one. So if, if you want to extend this, you still only need one power supply, provided you're only switching one point to motor at a time, which you most likely are. So the extra switches. All you need to do is the wire that goes to the comma of the switch, which is directly out of the power supply, that goes to the center on every single switch you've got. You then got the extra two point motors with the coils on. There's two coils are connected together, like we said before. And again, this wire, which comes from the other side of the power supply there, that can just extend to these links. Or you could have the wire could go directly back to there. It would work either way around. So that then leaves the red and the green wires from these point motors. Sorry, have the red one from there. And the red one from there. from there and the green one from that point motor so all you've really got to remember is two wires out of the power one goes to the common connection which is a link on every single point motor you've got and the other wire out of the power goes to the center pin which is the common of every switch and then that leaves you two spare terminals on the point motors got two spare pins on the switches so you just connect those together and obviously which side you put them on makes the point motor go the opposite way